The following material has been edited to prevent copyright issues. All images, text and art are owned by the respective companies. Please support the comic book industry by purchasing these books. This video is powered by My City Pulse, a geomapping app that lets you know all the happening events and promotions around the city. Download it on iOS and Android for free. Hey guys, this is Devashish from Otaku Next. Today I'm going to cover a story about one of the most popular and iconic comic book characters that everyone loves known as the Batman. Over the years we have seen many iterations of the Dark Knight on the silver screen. Today's story covers the origins of the Dark Knight but it has a twist to it. Batman Heavy Metal is an ongoing Batman story which is amazing beyond limits. This deals specifically with Batman and his importance to the Dark Multiverse and the whole DC Cosmos as of right now. So before we do anything I just want to get into it. So this is Dark Knight's Heavy Metal Batman Dawnbreaker. In a multiverse that should not have existed, there are decisions that should never have been made. Our story starts on Earth-32. We are witness to the all-too-familiar tragic origin story of the Batman. As Martha and Thomas, accompanied by Bruce, leave the Monarch Theater, they run into their would-be assailant and killer, Joe Chill. As the tragic story unfolds, we see Martha and Thomas dying at the hands of Joe Chill. As Bruce stares down at the lifeless corpses of his parents, something unusual happens. A Green Lantern ring attaches itself to him. As is stated, he had the power to overcome great fear. There was no fear in Bruce Wayne. Whatever emotion he had, had died along with his parents. Fueled by rage and the power ring, Bruce confronted Joe Chill. He wanted the ring to kill him. However, the first law of the <clears throat> Green Lantern Court does not allow the user to enable lethal force. Bruce tried again and again and the ring refused. In his determination and anger, his will overrode the safety protocol. Bruce Wayne now had the ability to kill. Without hesitation, he created horrifying amalgamations of light constructs in combination with his inner darkness. These creatures killed Joe Chill. Immediately after killing Joe Chill, he returned to the scene of the crime where his parents had recently been killed. He tried to use the ring to reanimate his dead parents. It worked to a certain extent, but they could not fully be restored. In his grief and loneliness, he flew off into the night. A couple of weeks later, villains were going missing. As Commissioner Gordon brings in Green Lantern for questioning, Bruce warns Gordon to speak to him politely since the last cop that talked to him rudely ended up in a very unpleasant manner. As Gordon keeps questioning Bruce, we get glimpses of Bruce Wayne killing Scarecrow and the Penguin by placing him in an asteroid storm. As Gordon asks where the Penguin is, Bruce tells Gordon to look up, he might just see the Penguin's spleen and spine. As Gordon tries to reason with him, all Bruce states is, it's a shame Barbara has to grow up without a father, and turns around and incinerates him. After killing Detective Gordon, Bruce gets confronted by the whole Green Lantern Corps. As Ganthet and the other Guardians wa warn Bruce not to use the ring as he is slowly polluting the emotional spectrum with his darkness. As the confrontation begins, Batman initiates the signature move called Blackout. As darkness surrounds the Green Lantern Corps, creatures of darkness start emerging and ripping the core apart. The lantern's constructs were ineffective against Batman's corrupted constructs of light and darkness amalgamations. As the dust of the battle settled, one of the last remaining guardians please, pleads with Batman to not corrupt the emotional spectrum any further. The little blue Maltuasian's words fall on deaf ears as shortly after that he gets his head ripped off by a darkness construct. No matter what he had done, there was no way to fill the void in his heart. He had killed any and everyone who basically got in his way. His lack of fear along with his perseverance and iron will had made him come out on top against even the Green Lantern Corps. However, it still was not enough, the void made by his parents that could never be filled. As Bruce wanted to be more than just a Green Lantern, he stared at the Green Lantern power battery and entered it. As darkness and the green energies engulfed him, he came out as something else. There was no more Green Lantern, no more Bruce Wayne. As the new entity emerges from the Emerald Light, he recites his own oath. With darkness black, I choke the light. No brightest day escapes my sight. I turn the dawn to midnight. Beware my power, Dawnbreaker's might. As with all Earths in the Dark Multiverse, it was approaching its end. After the Earth exploded, Dawnbreaker was floating in the darkness and the void of space. And then he hears a very sinister laugh. He hears a voice, 
of the Batman that laughs, a version of the Batman who became the Joker. He introduces Dawn Breaker to Murder Machine and Red Death, who are also alternate versions of Batman. As the Bat who laughs states, if Dawn Breaker joins them, then Lord Barbados would resurrect the de his dead parents. Fast forwarding to our present time, we see Dawn Breaker attacking Coast City. He is immediately he immediately starts terrorizing the local denizens. As panic and pandemonium grips the city, Hal Jordan confronts Dawnbreaker. Immediately Dawnbreaker starts attacking Hal Jordan and stating he has had experience killing lanterns before. Before Hal can react, Dawnbreaker initiates blackout and darkness constructs attack Hal Jordan and his ring is ineffective against the construct Dawnbreaker makes. Being consumed by the darkness construct, Hal Jordan is saved at the untimely ar arrival of Dr. Fate. After the departure of Hal Jordan, Dawnbreaker went on to conquer the entire city and turn it into his own twisted form of Gotham.